Sea level rising is one of the most devastating consequences of uh, the climate change, especially for coastal areas. So why is the sea level rising? There are two reasons, two main reasons. First of all, thermal expansion in the ocean. As the temperature of ocean waters increases, the water expands and the sea level increases. Rises. The other reason is uh, the fact that uh, continental glaciers in the Alps, in the Himalayan mountains, in, in the Andes, in Africa, and also the big ice packs in Greenland and in eastern Antarctic area are also melting, contributing to the sea level rise. Ever since the beginning of the industrial area, the sea level has risen by approximately 20 centimeters, but we expect that by the end of the 21st century, the sea level will rise by another 30 to uh, 80 or even 100 centimeters according to the IPCC predictions. Some predictions based on different models also uh, predict uh, that the rise will reach 1 meter 40. It's all a matter of time scale really because the sea level rise uh, due to uh, global warming will continue for about uh, 1,000 years due to the time it takes for the ocean waters to mix, whereas the uh, ice pack melting in Greenland and eastern Antarctic uh, is uh, affected by threshold and dynamic uh, movements in such a way that once it is triggered, it will continue for several thousand of years. So the 100 centimeter figure will definitely be exceeded, maybe not in this century, but definitely in the following ones. What does it mean for coastal areas and for the people who live along the coastal areas? We all have, we have in observed uh, more intensive erosion along many different coasts in all continents. And also uh, the number and the intensity of uh, extraordinary events has uh, been observed in the uh, Saint Laurent area, for instance, in Canada. And this has had many impacts. Some uh, coastal ecosystems are increasingly being uh, submerged, such as the mangrove or the salty marshes, which uh, is all the more detrimental if we consider that uh, the uh, coastal area is uh, more densely occupied and built, and therefore ecosystems have no room available to go more inland and back down to protect themselves from being submerged. Houses are being damaged and uh, more frequently by floods uh, or by the salt, both inside and outside of the house. Roads are being damaged and must be repaired, which is very expensive and sometimes even moved inland. And there is also the matter of salty water going down the wells, the aquifers, and also the uh, agricultural lands uh, along the coast. This happens in Senegal, in Bangladesh, or in the Nile Delta, and it has an impact on the uh, food safety and also the uh, purchasing power or the economic power of the uh, people who live along the coast. So what can these populations do to adjust to the changes? There are several strategies which are normally divided in three main families of strategies, uh, protection, adjustment, and withdrawal. And obviously we can add a fourth principle, that of precaution. Now protection. Protection can be ensured with uh, rock fills and uh, higher embankments, and this is usually what uh, coastal communities do to protect themselves in both industrialized uh, countries such as Canada or developing countries such as Senegal. More and more, the coast is protected by uh, rock fills and uh, rock barriers. Uh, but in large areas uh, where a large population lives and where the uh, real estate is uh, expensive and the only strategy to protect themselves against the sea consists in building dams in towns like uh, London, New York or Venice, very expensive protections are built. 
large dams uh, or removable dams, uh, etc. Now, coastal protections also have their limitations. Many structures are not well suited to the uh, real danger, the real threat. And sometimes they are submerged by uh, the floods or the tidal waves and can be damaged during extreme events. It is not infrequent to see walls falling down on the uh, beach when their foundations are eaten away by the sea. And also beaches are uh, eroded by the sea and the uh, resulting coast is totally artificial and can no longer be inhabited by fishes and birds and all the species that used to inhabit it. This has a huge impact on the landscape. Now, adjustment is a different strategy. For instance, in uh, Bangladesh, <coughs> rice growing has been replaced by um, prawn growing because prawns do not suffer from the intrusion of salty water as much as rice would. And in Bangladesh, also following a disaster, the figures uh, in excess of a few hundred thousand uh, casualties was reduced to only several thousand casualties <coughs> between the 70s and the years 2000. And also, um, islands or peninsulas have been protected by uh, bridges which were built higher up in order to keep communication easy in the event of a flood. Withdrawal is the third strategy. Here we have the Saloon Delta in Senegal. Populations have had to flee the coastal area because it was no longer inhabitable. But in the Netherlands, withdrawal has been planned. Some polders, which are below the level, the sea level, have been uh, used solely as growing and grazing, uh, agriculture and grazing land, and houses have been withdrawn inland to territories which are less susceptible to the sea level and the risk of flood. However, across the world, precaution is absolutely essential. In New Orleans, for instance, the recently built residential areas were flooded, whereas the old French district, which was built uh, in the uh, 19th century, was kept uh, secure. In uh, some uh, areas, the houses were built uh, along the coast, and obviously this is not the best way to uh, face the challenge posed by uh, the climate change. Populations need to start planning on the longer term so that they know that uh, within 30 or 50 years something must be done and that the uh, land use must be planned in such a way that populations can be protected.